Now I'll add a new page for this for this uh, demo. I'll call it Cache API, and we'll keep the code in a separate file. Now for this uh, for this demo, I'm going to use our trusty data grid, and I'll call it DG1 and run at equal server. But that's it. I'm not going to bind it. I'm not going to bind it in a declarative way. I'm going to bind it programmatically. So to do that, we need a page load uh, method, some code in page load. So I'll double click it. It's my shortcut for getting the page load method. And inside here, I'll say, just to do something quick, you know what? We're always binding to a database. I'm going to do something this different this time and bind it to an XML file. Um, so to do that, I'm going to add a quick XML file. Let's see, right there. I'll just call it names. Let's just be some names of people. So person one, I'll just do me first equals Scott, last equals Stanfield, and let me add another one. Person first equals Jack, last equals Gal. Okay, so we'll save that. Now back in our page load code, um, we'll do something simple. So first of all, I need this if the page is not in the post back mode, that's what I care about. Um, I need a path to that file. So we have a path variable, set it equal to websites cache to what I call it names.xml. Okay, so we're going to read that XML file into a data set. So we need a variable for the data set. Data set. And it has a method called readXML, which is handy, and I just pass it the path name. And finally, our data grid one has a method a property called data source, which I'll just point to the data set, and finally tell it to bind to that data source. So this is some of the code that we've been doing in a declarative way, but now we can do it programmatic. And let's see if this works. There we go. So quick and dirty way just to read directly from an XML file. Okay, now let's add caching to this as well. So I need to make a few changes to the code. So first I'm going to put this dem statement for the data set at the top of this method. And I don't want to create a new instance of it yet because there's a chance, but not on the first time through, it will be found inside the cache object, this global cache object. And we have to give it a name, the name of the cache, uh, the cache hash or the cache key value. And if it's found, I want that generic object to be returned ca uh, cast as a data set. Now the first time through, that's not going to be found. So in this case, data set, if the data set is nothing, then we're going to execute a block of code. Else, in diff, I'm get my code all lined up. Okay, so now we need this path code up here. And we're still going to be reading the XML from the data set, but now I need to actually set it equal to a new data set because before the, the memory wasn't allocated for it. So now I have a data set object and I read in the XML file. Now before I do any page bonding, I want to stash this data set away in using the cache API. So the cache has a method called insert and I have to give it a name, just the key value, and I'll use the same one I used right here. So we'll call it names. And then I give it the name of the object that I want to cache. In this case, it's the data set. Now, notice that's all I have to do. But we can go one step further and give it a cache dependency. So a cache dependency is, is interesting here. I'm going to create a new cache dependency. Cache dependency. And using the same path name right here, I can now associate this cache entry. It will be associated with that, that file name, that path, and if the file changes, it will automatically invalidate the path. So we insert that into the cache, and finally, um, I'm going to use a trace statement this time. It will write out to a special area on the page that the data was, uh, let's see, names read from XML file. Oops, I'll copy that to the clipboard. Now down here in the else statement, if it wasn't in the cache, then I mean if it was in the cache, there's nothing we have to do. I'll put the statement in here as well, but I'll say the name's read from cache. And finally, we do our data binding and we're done. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh, 
one more thing. In order to view the trace statements, the output from that, I need to enable tracing for the page. And at the top level here, I'll just set um, set the trace flag equal to true. And set the trace mode, I want it sorted by the category so the warnings will be at the top. So here's what we're seeing. This is all the tracing details. So the names were read from the XML file this time. But when I hit refresh, notice they were read from the cache. Refresh again, it's still cached. In fact, if I close this page and go back to it, it will still be read from the cache because that's associated with the whole session in ASP.NET. I'm mean, sorry, not the session, but the application in ASP.NET. So let me add something to the XML file to invalidate the cache. I'll add another name. Oops, got to get my XML correct here. Now I hit save, and go back and hit refresh. I expect this to be, say, names read from XML file and that will be updated. Sure enough. But now when I hit it again, it's cached. So that's, that's good. So we have, we're using the cache dependency and the cache API directly. The last thing I want to do on this page is programmatically flush the cache. So at the top, I'll have a button to reset the cache. And inside here, it's simple. I just call cache.remove. And then the item I want to remove is the names out of the collection. And then simply redirect right back to this page. Save that and run it again. So here we say we read from the uh, reading from the cache. But if I flush it, this time through, we're going to read from the XML file. And now when I hit refresh, it's still good. You know, there's something you should notice. This is the time it took to execute that, that code. Watch, when I flush the cache and read from the file system, that was 3,500, I don't know, 3,500. It was, it was pretty quick. We're in the sub-second space, obviously. But next time I hit refresh, watch that number drop dramatically by at least a factor of 10. So it turns out reading from the cache is pretty quick. When I read from the file system by flushing the cache, you know, it, it's it's granted it's small for this one user, but if you multiply this page hit times a thousand, if you're a very busy website, that could add up. And you know, that's just coming from the file system. It's even probably more useful to do that kind of performance tuning by caching the contents of a database or data read. So I hope you found these these techniques useful. The Cache API has a lot of a lot of you'll find a lot of use for it once you start playing with it. It can really improve the performance of your site.